Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I'm joined today by a very special guest. We got Kurt N Nelson on the podcast, um, and he's a he's got a PhD in psychology. So I'm super excited to talk with him. He specializes in behavior change, which obviously, you know, when it comes to fitness and setting goals and you know just leveling up in life, I mean that's that's a huge topic. So super excited to talk with Kurt. Um, so first and foremost, I appreciate you coming on the podcast, Kurt. Um, and first question is like, you know, since we're coming into 2024, we're still in January when we're recording this, like what do people get wrong when they're trying to set new goals for the year and, and change their habits? Like why do most people fail with their new year's <laughs> resolutions? <laughs> oh, well, here goes the hour. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Okay. It's great. Great to be here. Appreciate this. And, um, so I think there's a lot. There's a lot that goes on. So when we think about uh, most people and their New Year's resolutions, there's really good research out there that shows, hey, by the second week of January, 70% of people are, you know, they're, they've kind of dropped or fallen off on those resolutions. By the right. end of January, that's gone up another 10, 15%. Yeah. And, you know, so depending upon which study you look at, you know, New Year's resolutions really succeed maybe 7 to 10% of the time. And yeah give or take a little bit on that, on self-reported measures and those things. But right. I think one of the couple of the big things on New Year's resolutions in in particular, mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes we do New Year's resolutions kind of as a last minute ad hoc. Mm -hmm. um, this is the expectation, you know, somebody we're right. sitting around with friends and they're, hey, what are you, what's your New Year's resolution? You go, oh, it's this, it's that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and you don't put the effort and really the forethought into it. The sure. the second thing, so that that obviously those people are the ones who who you know their New Year's resolution is done January third, right? right. They're, they're, <laughs> they do one day and then they're done. Yeah. Um, but the the other the other piece on that, and I think this is a big piece with goals, is that we often you can look at goals from a couple different perspectives. One is you can look at um, Goals that are driven um, kind of as this big aspirational piece of here is what I want my life to be. Or you can look at goals as I need to do X uh, number of exercises this month and it's going to be, you know, these. They're, they're different different types of, of ways that they get processed in our brain. Sure. So So with that, and, and the thing is, is people go, is one better than the other? And I always talk to them and say, no, actually, what we're looking at is we're looking at goals from two different lenses. And, and they they work um, in con kind of in parallel with each other if sure. you set them up right. And part of the reason that many, I think, of the goals, particularly New Year's goals, is they're more, they, they can be one or the other, but they're usually not a combination of both. So in other words, it can be I want to get fit this year and I'm going right. to, you know, I'm going to do everything. It's that big overarching goal or yeah. it's, I'm going to work out four times a week, you know, for, for 60 minutes each, each time. Right. Right. And, and, and the power, and uh, sorry, I'm going on long on this. Like I said, this, we could probably talk the entire hour on this, <laughs> but the, the aspirational goals, those, those big ones that we have, those goal oriented end state they're really good from a motivational perspective. They feel really good about, yes, that's who I want to be. This is my element in, in, in this visioning kind of close your eyes and vision what you want to be. Yeah. Those are good from a motivational perspective, but they get lost. We don't know. If we don't have the other part of that goal into it. We're not necessarily able to achieve them and we right. get lost and we don't do it. Yeah. On the contrary, the the I'm going to exercise five times a week, various different pieces, um, those end up not having the same aspirational kind of pull. And it's like sure. it becomes trudgery. And all of a yeah. sudden I am, oh, I got to get up. I got to go. Oh, man, I'm just tired. I don't want to get up and go to, to you know, go right. work out. I don't want to do that. So it's that combination and how yeah. you structure them. And then I, we can, and I'm sure you'll, we'll get into a whole bunch of stuff, but then it's, you know, willpower almost always isn't enough. And so we, yeah. we too often depend on willpower to make our goals come true. And we need to set up systems and look at the environment and think about a whole bunch of other factors that go into this. A hundred percent. Yeah. I, I completely resonate with what you said on having, you know, an overarching goal, um, and 
let me know if I'm saying this right, but what you said is like, basically you need an overarching goal, something that, that motivates you. It's almost kind of like the carrot at the end of the stick that it's like, all right, this, this is something that pumps me up to kind of set this goal. Um, it's kind of that aspirational goal, but you also want kind of process goals, um, you know, goals that are a part of the process. Like I want to shoot to, you know, work out this many times a week. And that's what gets me to that aspirational goal. And so you're saying most people, they, they tend to have one or the other and they, they forget to combine the two. Is that kind of what you're saying? That's a lot of it. I think you've just nailed that. There's, there's that combination piece. And again, that in and of itself doesn't always solve every issue, but yeah. you will go much further if you combine those aspirational goals with yeah. your kind of everyday here's the here's the the stuff i have to do in order to achieve that so right. and and the 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 technical term it's it's outcome goals versus effort goals right mm -hmm. you have here is the end result that i want the outcome right. and here is the effort goals what i need to do every day or every week or whatever the time period is in order to achieve those and you need right. to tie those together for sure and then the other part you were saying is like having systems and not just relying on willpower. So what do people get wrong with that? Like how can people get better at not just relying on, on willpower and not just, you know, exhausting their willpower? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. And so there's really cool, cool research on, on willpower and various different things. Roy Baumeister and a number of other, um, you know, psychologists, behavioral scientists have done a lot of work on that. And what what we know from willpower is very similar to to muscles. At least this yeah. is a good good way of, of talking about that, right? You can build up your willpower. So that's that's a that's a right. key piece. Remember that, right? As yeah. we're moving forward. You can build your willpower up. But willpower is also like a muscle. Like after you exercise, you can't keep lifting that same amount, right? And so as the day goes on and you're using more and more of your willpower you tend to, it, it tends to, to falter and break. Right. Now, a way to overcome that is, is to just create systems and processes and set up your environment such that you don't even have to use your willpower, right? The, the research that they show on people that have really good willpower actually don't have any better willpower than most of us. They just have set up their life so they don't have to tap into that willpower. Right, which is vital when we think about this. So I use this example all the time of, all right, every day I, I office out of the house, um, three, four o'clock, I usually kind of get these hunger pains. And so I go down to the kitchen and I open up the cupboard, right? And when I open up the cupboard, I look and see what's there. And with, when and when, if there are Oreos there, yeah. It's like, I go, Ooh, that sounds really good. And and I go, Oh, but I shouldn't. Right. I, right. I reached in. It's like, Oh, I should, I have to use willpower when yeah. I see the Oreos there. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm, I'm really good. And other times I'm really bad. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's a whole nother thing. Like once I start eating one and I go, oh, I'll just have two or three. And then it, then that two or three become four or five and six or seven. And right. that's a whole, that's a whole separate side. But yeah. one of the things I can do is instead of having putting those Oreos in the cupboard, I can move those Oreos just downstairs. We have a you know storage area downstairs. We still have them in the house. They are there for the kids and for special occasions and other things. But when I go down at 3 or 4 p.m. in the afternoon and I open up that cupboard and I look in there, there's no Oreos staring back at me. And right. because there are no Oreos staring back at me, I don't have to – my willpower isn't engaged. I can look and I go, oh – there's some more healthy crackers or whatever else it would be, right? That that aren't aren't going to be that negative for me. So right. that's what I mean about setting up the environment for for that. For sure. Um, there's another, and and this one isn't me, but there's another example that was um, I forget who talked about this, but but they told the story. They told the story, and again, this might relate to your your audience, right? They they told the story of. Um, a, a person who wanted to um, learn how to play guitar. And uh, he set up what would be called an effort goal, right? That every night before, you know, um, he, after he comes home from, from work, he will practice guitar for an hour. 
Yeah. And if he does that for, you know, five days a week for a year, he will get pretty good at playing the guitar. We know that. That's just it's, it's just there. Yeah. The fact of the matter is it's that's actually a really good goal. It's very specific. It has, you know, here's how many times I'm going to do it. I'm going to where it's going to happen. It's actually a really good goal to set. Now, the problem was is he would come home it's late after work you know he should have got home at five got home at six because he is late at work he's just tired exhausted he sits down on the couch what do you do when you sit down on the couch you turn on the television yeah. right all of a sudden he gets caught up in whatever television shows there all of a sudden, it's a couple hours later now he makes some last minute dinner and now he's just he's exhausted and goes to bed right doesn't doesn't do the guitar and, and so what he realized is that I need to change the environment. So, um, and, and this comes into this kind of like habits and building routine. So what he did is he moved the television. He moved the television from kind of that living room, front room that he had when he came into his apartment into the back bedroom. Um, still had it. Still can go watch the football game on Sundays, whatever. Couch is still there, different pieces. He moved his guitar, put the guitar stand next to the couch. So mm -hmm. what's he do? He comes home 6, 6 o'clock, 6.30. He's tired from work, but sits on the couch. No TV. He can't turn that on, but the guitar is right next to him. So what does he end up doing? He picks up that guitar, starts practicing, plays yeah. for a couple, you know, plays for 40 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever it would be. Right. And then goes in. So again, it's mm -hmm. those types of things that you can do in order to help. So. For sure. Yeah. And I think, you know, we were talking about it before we started recording my, my apartment is basically a gym, right? So that's, that's an example of kind of just making it obvious, right? Like there's, there's a lot less friction between me and getting to work out in, right. And then, like you said, creating kind of more friction between you and, and the bad habits, like the Oreos, you know, putting it, you know, farther away from you, like, cause I completely agree. I, t I tell my clients all the time that, <laughs> There's been times where I've eaten an, an entire peach cobbler in one sitting just because it was there, right? <laughs> an entire cookie cake. Like I, I tell these stories, like it's it's not that I have more willpower than them. It's like you just need to create the environment so that you don't have to use as much willpower, hundred yeah. percent. So yeah, yeah. Which is and you you talk you use the the exact right term, right? Friction. It's the yeah. amount of friction that you are putting in between, and we know that our behavior is really impacted by that friction. So yeah. in other words, if you put, it blows me away. Um, the, there's research that like, uh, if you're out on a website and you're buying something, an extra click drops off oh, yeah. somewhere between <laughs> 20 and 30% of people. It's a click, it, yeah. like, it doesn't, it takes no effort. <laughs> and yet we still, that that's a piece of friction. So the, yeah. the the more friction that you can remove, the more likely that that behavior is going to happen. Right. The more friction you put in, the less likely that. So again, the things that you want to do, make as easy as possible. The things that yeah. you don't want to do, make as hard as possible. Basic or simple. For sure. Yeah, I, I want to give a couple more examples on my end that I that I recently kind of changed in my life. Um, one is on my phone. I made it black and white. Um, so guys, if you're listening to this, like I, I, if you have like a phone addiction, if you just are on your phone too much, which I was, uh, put your phone on black and white. There's a way to do it in your settings and it makes your phone a lot less enjoyable to be on. <laughs> I guarantee that. So you'll spend a lot less time on your phone if that's your goal. So I highly recommend that little hack right there. Yeah. So you're the yeah. second person I've heard talk about that. Really? But yeah. I had another, it was on another podcast and same, same <laughs> thing. And I've, I, I'm going to have to do that now. This is like <laughs> double the time. There we go. Well, I think it's like the new age addiction, just us in our phones. So I think it's, it's a big hack right there. So and very much. And, and I mean, they've designed a lot of social media and uh, apps and others specifically in understanding what, gets us hooked in habit forming yeah. right the yeah. uh re variable rewards this idea that it doesn't reward doesn't come up i'm scrolling social media i don't see everyone i don't care about but then every once in a while it's like oh that's really interesting and so right you get a dopamine hit you know you have all the ease of what it is it's vibrant there's all sorts of different pieces that you can can look at and that's they're, they're designed to pull yeah. us in and to keep us on so 
yeah, there's there's little literal engineers for these <laughs> social platforms and stuff that we're scrolling on to keep us hooked and keep us on our phones. So on and I wanted to point out too on that note, like the Oreos, right? There's an engineer yeah. making those Oreos as pleasurable as possible to make you want to keep coming back to those. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> Doritos, Oreos, all the stuff that's bad for us. They yeah. they, they they know, right? Yeah. I, and, and there's a part of that. So uh, in, in all seriousness, right, there, there is a part. I mean, we've evolved for those types of things. We, right. we When we were tribal and we, you know, kind of hunted in packs and different pieces, you you came across something sweet and delicious. You ate that, right? Because you didn't, it didn't happen every day. It didn't happen every, yeah. every week, every month, right? Yeah. And those were high calorie, really good, allowed us to survive better. Yeah. And so we savor those pieces. That's I really not love the case any not the case anymore, right? Yeah. <laughs> I really love that point. I, I love thinking about that because it's it's almost like it's it's not our fault, right? Like it's like we we were programmed to be rewarded for really satiating, you know, pleasure type of food. Like it was it was rewarding for a reason because it helped our survival. But now there's like you said, there's no reason for that. It's almost like it's outdated <laughs> for our system. And now, now it, you know, it's 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 creating the obesity crisis yeah. and diabetes and all of the other factors that come into this. But but you're absolutely right. And I think the big piece on that for people is is it's we are programmed that way. And yeah. so if we feel really horrible, understand that. It's not saying that that's an excuse and therefore you don't have to do anything about it. Right. But you you do have to understand that. Hey, this is hardwired, and so it makes it just that much more of we have to we have to overcome it. We have to build yeah. in these other systems to combat it, and it's yeah. not just again as we go back to willpower. So right on that note, I think that's a good tangent to to one of my other questions. Like I hear a lot of people talk about like creating an identity to change your your behavior, mm -hmm. and then I also hear about you know on the opposite end changing your behavior to create a new identity like what do you think has to come first the the identity like adopting a new identity or um adopting the new actions to create that new identity oh you're asking tough questions um <laughs> so here here is the it's the chicken or egg okay. um uh, and you can do both and so there's an element to call it, it's self identity theory um and and so we have these um, and, and self, I, I won't go into all the detail, but self identity is um, actually made up of what we call self schemas. These mini, here is how I will show up in this situation, this specific situation in this kind of context, right? We have, an, we have an image of ourselves of how we show up and what we do in those. And all of those kind of piece together. In other words, I show up differently in the library than I do at a football game, than I do having dinner with my um, in-laws, than I do having in you know dinner with my my buddies, right? I'm it's mm -hmm. just, I show up differently, right. the language I use, my body language, all of those. But there's an overarching kind of piece that we can kind of go, oh, this is my self-identity. And so one of the things is when we are thinking about using identity to change our behavior, we oftentimes think in that overarching piece and what we need to be thinking about is schemas. So what we mm -hmm. need to be thinking about is how do I show up and who do I want to be in X situation in mm -hmm. X context, right? Okay. Okay. So so that's first. And, and so the, that drives more behavior change than kind of the big, I'm going to be, I'm an engineer, I'm going to, or I, I, whatever that big, big piece is. The, the alternate though, and this has been, again, proven with lots of really interesting studies, is that we have a concept in our in our brain, which is a kind of consistency. We, we like to be consistent. Yeah. And so this, if our behaviors are acting in such a way that it, it conflicts with this idea about who we are, the self-identity that we have, there are a couple of things that can happen. One, we can... Uh, we can look at that and kind of go, oh, I need to stop that behavior because it doesn't align with my identity. 
we can do some what's called cognitive dissonance and disassociation and a variety of other things and we can explain it away this uh, oh, i i behave that way because i was super tired i wouldn't normally do that mm -hmm. but this is that it's actually adding a, a specific schema in mm -hmm. to say oh when i'm super tired then i won't go and work out whereas or, or whatever that would be right and and so those are different things or uh, what it can do is it can go in and you can go, oh, I am now, you know, exercising a lot. Um, I see that I'm doing that every day or I'm running a lot. So now maybe I never considered myself a runner before. I, I, I might be a runner and yeah. <laughs> therefore I am changing that. So the behavior can lead to identity change. Identity change can lead to behavior change because again that same that cognitive dissonance that feeling of angst when i'm doing something that isn't and i have to explain it away or i can change the behavior so in other words yeah. if i say to myself i'm a runner and i realize i don't run right there's going to be some cognitive dissonance there so yeah okay interesting so it's i never really thought maybe it was the chicken or the egg i was i was thinking maybe you had an exact <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wish I, uh, you know, <laughs> you're, you're talking to, you know, I'm, I'm a scientist, so it's always going to be yeah. very couched in like, right. oh, well, here you go. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's the, the sign of a good scientist, right? Where they're, they're not going to give you a very black and white binary. It's this, <laughs> right? <laughs> So. I know, but that makes it, that's, it's like, oh, I just wanted a really clear answer. And I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. So, okay. And, you know, kind of related, but how can people build their confidence with with maybe adopting new actions or trying to create a new identity? How can someone build their confidence if maybe they just feel like they're they're just so far away from that person that they want to be? Yeah. That's a really good question, Cade. That I mean, when we think about um looking out, we have uh, there's an aspect that's called um so we 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 always look to others. Um, we are social creatures, and so there's a whole line of uh, research that is done around social norms, and so kind of looking out. And oftentimes, in that, there's this work that is about um, you know your your group that you belong to, but then there's also aspirational groups. So I want to be like that CEO. I want to be like that fitness guru. I want to be yeah. like that Olympic person, right? Whoever that is. And that is, we often kind of then say, well, if, I, if that person can do it, I can do it. And I'm going to put my, I'm going to kind of latch my identity onto what that is. Yeah. That can, that can be really inspirational um, because you can, you can look at that person, you can do it. But then again, it can also be very demotivating because you go, all right, that person runs the hundred and, you know, I don't know what's what's the what what are people running the hundreds in in Olympics now? You know, it's like, under ten seconds, yeah, right? 10 but seconds. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, and I'm taking twelve, thirteen, and I'm not anywhere close to getting where I need to be, and it can be very demotivating. Um, same thing for any type of that. My I hold this ideal self of who I want to be, but my actual real world self is very different. And so there's a component on that. And, and this is gets to be tricky because we can delude ourselves uh, and we can stay motivated and do all of these things and just continually like explain away why we aren't up to that point. Um, some psychologists would call that delusional and you have, you know, they're, they they'd actually be working with you <laughs> on that. Your friends would call you delusional, right? You, mm -hmm. you know, those different pieces. Yeah. But there is this aspect of also saying, all right, what are the things that I can do to look at the steps to get me to who that person is? Mm -hmm. And it's not always this aspect of, of saying, you know, I'm going to get there tomorrow. It's this realistic approach of saying, all right, if I want to be financially secure, if I want to have a million dollars in the bank and my bank account right now has $24 in it, right? Well, unless I win the lottery, you know, tomorrow ain't going to happen to me having a million dollars in there unless I, you know, have a rich uncle who all of a sudden, you know, wills it to me, right? Yeah. 
-hmm. So what do I need to do? And then you set the steps in place for you to do this. Again, we talk about those um, outcome goals and we talk about the effort goals. So you look at how are you um, building that plan to become the person that you want to be. And from a motivational perspective, one of the most motivating things we can do is when we see progress. We are highly motivated by progress. Where motivation fails, and you've probably seen this a lot in your work, is when we plateau or move backwards. Right. And it's it's amazing that as soon as we start slipping, you know, we could have been excited, excited, excited. I'm moving, I'm moving. Even if it's just a little bit, I'm moving an inch or two mm -hmm. inches or whatever it would be. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden... I'm no longer moving. I'm I'm staying in the same spot or maybe even slipping backwards. Then it's like the throw your hands up and it's actually, this is a term in psychology and behavioral science. It's called what the hell effect, right? Oh. And so what the hell I'm done, right? I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm out of it. And that is a big issue when we get to kind of that ideal that's way out there. Yeah. You need to kind of set milestones and different pieces that are more realistic that you can show hey, I'm moving towards that. And as long as I'm moving towards that, that's good. And actually, there's a whole aspect of how to reward yourself, mentally reward yourself, not the not kind of rewarding with food or other kind of things, but the mental rewards that we get is like, enjoy the journey. And, you know, these little, these little wins are as important, if not more important than that big win. For sure. I I, you know, I've got some thoughts on that and I'll share it in a sec, but I want to get from you, like, how can someone enjoy the little wins more and yeah. reward themselves mentally better? That's a, it's a great question. There's um uh, all sorts of um, research on awe and on savoring. And this is, this is kind of, uh, if you can take some of that research. And so one of the things that we talk about, um, and kind of savoring the moment, savoring that little win mm -hmm. is is creating the space and the time to do that. We often pass by those, right? Where we we are get so focused on I hit this now, what's the next next goal that I need yeah. to get to? Yeah. And what we need to do is to create some to slow down, to create some time. And to enjoy that moment. And, and there's a really good research that shows, hey, you can do that with things like if then statements or when then statements. When I do this, I will X do X, right? So when I achieve that new weight, um, you know, lifting, you know, goal that I have, I will take, you know, a uh, two minutes to just bask in that, you know, piece, yeah. or I will call up my friend and and talk about it, or I will yeah. do X, right? So if, when, or when, when, then kind of statements. Okay. The other piece is mindfulness. And so uh, again, if you think about mindfulness, we think about meditation, which it is, right? But that can also just be being in the moment mm -hmm. um, and uh, being aware of being in the moment. Again, we are not good at that as humans. We tend to live in the future or live in the past. And so just being able to do some mindfulness things, just breathing exercises, being able to um, stop and not think about the future, not think about the past, just focus in on the present, that can help in some of those uh, aspirations. And then just having a mindset. Um, and this is this is the weakest of, of all of these from a, a, a tip, right? Because it's easy to say, oh, just change your mindset and, <laughs> and, and, and look at this. But, but it's really hard to do. But, right. but we can, right? We can start to kind of think back. And one of the things is, you know, if you write a gratitude journal or, or do a gratitude practice every day, it starts to rewire your brain to look for those things. And so if you do that, that starts to change your mindset. And therefore... When those times happen, and I always do this, like just simple things like, you know what, how often do you eat breakfast and you just pile through, even like a Saturday morning and you're, you're eating, you know, eggs and bacon or something and it's, you know, but you just scarf it down because you got some, you know, just stop, just yeah. like 
wow, just taste those eggs. Yeah. You know, there's work on sensation, this idea of, you know, we think about sensation as touch, but there's also smell, there's taste, there's seeing, there's hearing. Just focus in on what you're actually sensing yeah. and just live in that moment for a second. I really like that, actually. I, I think I intuitively have been doing that for some things. Um, like every time I get a new client, say I've got a call with a client, I, I get a new client, um, I just give myself some grace. Like I'm like, all right, cool. I did something good. I can just like, I'm going to take like five minutes and just like relax <laughs> yeah. and just, just kind of give myself that reward. Um, yeah. and then, and then like another example is like just now completed a, a tough workout and before our call, like I just, you know, ate a meal, took my time. Right. And just yeah. like savored that meal. Um, so it's, it's very subtle, but I feel like that can be super powerful. So I really like that. It, it, it's amazing what that does to the overall satisfaction that we have with our lives, right? We, because you can start looking back and like, if you look back on your past week, what do you remember? You know, what, what 95, 98% of our lives just pass by with very little reflection, very little yeah. consciousness on it. And the yeah. more that you can focus on those, like you said, take those five minutes to just, breathe and smile. I got a new client. This is awesome. Yeah. This is great. And, and just enjoy that, that five minutes for what it is. And don't feel like I got to hustle and go get the next client, right? right? Make sure you're, you're, you're doing that. Enjoy, slow down, enjoy yeah. that meal. Don't rush through it. Right. Yeah. All of those things. For sure. And I, a big point on that. Um, I know you, I think you said you have your own journal and I, I love journaling. Um, and it's something we've talked about on the podcast quite a bit. I've had like journaling specialists on the, yeah. on the podcast and everything. So I want, I want you to talk about what's different about your journal and oh. I, like how to, how do people find that? And what, what <laughs> like, kind of just what's the details on, on that? Oh, thank you. It's um, all right. I get to do a product plug. All right, here we go. <laughs> um, So we have uh, as part of the, the, I have a company called the Lantern Group Um, does work mostly with organizations, right? We work with companies on employee motivation, engagement, and being, behavioral science inside for leaders and various different pieces. And a few years ago, um, my the my vice president, right-hand guy, was like, oh, Kurt, we bring all this behavioral science into organizations. What can we do? Well, how can we bring this to just, you know, anybody who who is interested in this? And so it was like, oh, an aha. We've been doing business work for 25 plus years, but we have all these insights of about all of these different pieces on human dynamics and motivation, engagement, et cetera, we can use that to help people. And so the very first product that we've created, uh, it's called BrainShift. And so we have BrainShift Volume 1, BrainShift Journal Volume 1. We also have BrainShift um, Journal Volume 2. Uh, and they're, they're what we call guided journals. They're kind of gold journals. So again, at the beginning, we talk about what we call keystone goals. Those are those outcome goals. And we then break that down into milestones, which are the effort goals that you have. So we're combining both of those. But then we have every week, we have a behavioral science principle. Every day within that week, we have different prompts. They're all based on behavioral science and psychology and research to help people um, a, understand how they're they're trying to get to those goals better and understand their, their self-concept, but also to drive for success. And so what kind of separates our, our journal out there from what we see in others is, A, we bring a behavioral science lens to it. So we bring this, this insight into psychology, into human motivation, engagement, so that you are actually being you know, moving through this process in order to achieve those goals. Two, we we keep it fun. I mean, the there are some prompts that are consistent week over week, but every day there's usually something that is new. So many journals, it's like, all right, tell me about the, you know, the same gratitude, you know, what are you grateful for today? And then by yeah. tomorrow, it's what are you grateful for? What are you grateful for? And by three weeks, I'm just done. I don't have yeah. anything, you know, it's like, I'm going to repeat the same thing over and over. And we, we change that up. And so it's a unique nice. focus every time. So again, it keeps us, again, humans are novelty seeking. And so one of the yeah. things we know is that we create some novelty by just the prompts and the questions that we use. And nice. then lastly, I think it's just, we try to, it's not 
it, it requires some work, but it isn't uh, overly extensive. We don't, you're not, we're not asking you to journal, you know, for 30 minutes about your day. Uh, it's typically under five minutes and yeah. you can, you can bang it out and, and have that. And then um, with that, we also have some guides. So you can download some PDF guides. If you want to learn more about goals, we have a goal, uh, you know, it, it's called goal shift, right? So it's how do you set up these goals? What do you need to do about your goals? Different pieces. We have decision shift, which is about, you know, making better decisions. So how do you, again, bringing the science in on decision making on those. We are going to launch a new um, journal called Daily Shift, which is, it's um, much left less about achieving your kind of long-term keystone goals. But it's just more of, hey, here's like, what do I have to do today? One thing every yeah. day, how do I get it done? Nice. And um, it's all there. So awesome. Wow. I'm going to yeah. check these out for real. Cause I, <laughs> I, <laughs> I and, and I, you can get them on Amazon or go oh, out cool. to, to behavior shift is the larger kind of thing or brain shift dot um, uh, shop, I believe it is. Okay. Uh, and, and all of those are out there and so brain yeah. shift. So brain, brain shift. shift. Okay. Yeah. Brain shift. I'll look it up. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of weird. I'm I'm a fitness junkie, but I'm also like a journal junkie now. And I yeah. I try out different journals. I've tried like a bunch of different prompted journals. I just I like them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. And I do too. I mean, in, yeah. in the researching for this, I mean, we we went out there and there's some really good ones out there. Yeah. And then there's others that I kind of go, oh wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. um hopefully we 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 bring something to that field that is unique and for yeah. the the people that that want that it it works well that's For what sure. we've heard so yeah i i really like the idea of the daily kind of like well for one the daily prompt but also like the daily goal just one thing because i feel like if you can get just a little bit better that's kind of what this podcast is about right elevate every day just getting that one percent better so i really yeah. like that one i'm gonna check that one out so yeah. great cool. Very cool. I, I wanted to go back to, I, I had some thoughts on one of your earlier points where most people lose that motivation when they do start to like plateau or see any sort of, you know, maybe even stall out or backwards, you know, movement with their progress. And I think with that, one thing that's helped my clients is just not looking at one mode of progress. Like there's so many different things that you can measure with your progress, not just the weight, right? Look at the the body fat percentage, how, how you're feeling, how your gym progress is actually improving all these different things. And so I think if you can find a way to measure more than just the one goal that you have fixated on, it, it's going to allow you to stay motivated a lot better throughout the process. So that was one that I had on that. So yeah. Fully, fully agree with that. And even the other piece that can be really powerful is if you go that the the journey that I need to take to get from A to B um, has these plateaus or actually has these decreases built in. It's part right. of that process. For sure. Then instead of feeling like you're moving backwards, it's like, oh, I've hit that spot now. I just need to work through this spot and then I'll get onto that next piece. And so again, it's how you frame those sometimes. And if you can frame them as, uh, you know, this is part of, of the journey that I need yeah. to go through, that's great. But I love your concept of, look, don't just have one measure, have yeah. multitudes and look at all of them because those are the key when we think about all of this stuff. Yeah. Now that's that's a super powerful point that you made and yeah it's it's a hundred percent true because last year when I went on a diet and I, I lost like 28 pounds in the course of like four months uh like it wasn't like every week my weight just steadily went down the same no. rate every single week right there was weeks that it stayed the same or even went up sometimes like it, yeah. you just can't a hundred percent control it the entire time so just knowing that like there is going to be stalls there's going to be plateaus there's going to be times where you move up and down that is just part of the process i'm glad you made that point for yeah, sure yeah there's there's an other another interesting piece on that too is sometimes we get caught up like oh i missed you know I'm going to work out five days a week at 7 a.m. every morning and I'm going to do that. And then you miss a day and it's like, ah, it's then the what the hell effect comes in, right? Yeah. Katie Milkman, who's at the University of Pennsylvania, great researcher on um, um, habits and goals and all sorts of this kind of stuff, uh, did a really cool research where they looked at at gyms and, and they had people did either go and say, I'm going to work out at these you know, five days a week for at this specific time, 
versus people who I'm going to work out um, five days a week, but I'm going to give myself extra, you know, like a, a little leeway in there. And the, it's it's kind of it's again it's contradictory evidence. So uh, immediately those people that have that set like seven a.m. Uh, tend to do better in the in the early part, right? They're more likely to continue because it's set, it's there. Um, but if you look at long term retention of people keep continuing that workout, it's the people that give themselves some flexibility. So in other yeah. words, of five out of seven days, I'm going to work out. Or if it's seven days, but I get one cheat day, right? I get one yeah. day off and I can use it whenever. It's giving yeah. yourself that grace, as you had mentioned earlier, right. uh, can be shown to be really powerful because then that what the heck effect or what the hell effect doesn't come into play because yeah. it's like, oh, I'm going to use this. This is my thing. Same thing yeah. with diet. Same thing with lots of different things that we try to do from a habit formation perspective. That's really powerful too. And I think that's where probably a lot of people go wrong as well when they're setting their new year's resolutions is that they're, they're like going from zero to a hundred real quick, right? They're just changing everything. <laughs> so give yourself a little bit of grace. Yeah. And, and that's going to be a lot better for you in the long yeah. run for sure. Yeah. Okay. I know, I know you're a busy guy, Kurt. I don't want to take too much of your time. I know you, you said you, I think you had another meeting after this. So, uh, but one question I ask on the Elevate Everyday podcast to every guest is what is one actionable thing you'd like to challenge the listeners to, after listening to this, like take action on? Because on the Elevate Everyday podcast, it's not just about listening, right? We want to put things into practice right away. So what what's one thing that you'd like to challenge the listeners to to take action on after listening to this? So our, we'll go back to the very beginning when we were talking about, you know, that element of willpower versus setting up your environment. So look, it, determine what it is that you want to achieve. What is the goal that you want to do? And then really do an analysis around what are, what are those things? What's the friction that's getting in my way yeah. Or some conversely, like what don't I have friction that makes it harder to do, right? And from that, change your environment. Do something. Like be the guy that took his TV and put it in his back bedroom and moved the guitar out front. You know, bring out your weight set, you know, whatever it is. Make sure that you, you know, your your gym clothes are on the on the very first thing that you see when you open the drawer, right? Whatever those the simple things like that. Do something, make one change to your environment that will make uh, doing the right thing easy and doing the wrong thing hard. So that's my my goal or my my request for your listeners. There you go. <laughs> I love that. I, I feel like I could just go on, on tangents on that like for another hour. <laughs> we could talk. Yeah, we, we could, you know, it's always <laughs> like crazy so, stuff. So yeah, but I, I think I was a psychologist in a past life or something. I love talking with you guys. <laughs> So. Well, it's it, what I always find. And, and when people ask me, I go, you know, humans are we're just we're really fascinating creatures because yeah. if we were, um, you, you know, we do a lot of things that uh, I got in this. I was, a, 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 you know, I went to undergrad as an economist and and marketing. And so I kind of mm -hmm. came into this and going, well, you know, from an economics perspective, they assume that people are rational and that we do things for very specific rational reasons um and what psychology shows is that yeah no we don't right? <laughs> yeah. um, we do a lot of things that uh, an economist would say are very irrational but the the interesting piece is that we we often do those irrational things in a very predictable way in other words we know that if we do a you know, rationally, we think that, well, that will lead to B and to C. Well, you know, we we know that maybe that doesn't happen. If we do A, it might lead to to E or F, but, yeah. you know, it, it kind of often leads to E or F. So it's pretty predictable that that's going to happen. It doesn't always go to A, B, C. It goes different yeah. ways. And so that, I think, is really fascinating. And, you know, again, we're just, we're just interesting people to study. So I completely agree. And I I like obviously being a, a fitness coach and having a fitness business and everything. Like I, I love knowing more about the body, right. But the body and the mind are connected. And I, I just don't understand how people wouldn't want to know as much as they possibly can about their body and mind. Right. Like, it's like, this is, this is you. <laughs> like Why not try to understand yourself a hundred percent. So that's just yeah. how I've always felt. Yeah, um, no, I fully agree. Fully agree. <laughs> well, very cool. Kurt. Well, I, this has been fun, man. Um, 
maybe we can have you on in the future, but I really appreciate yeah. you coming on here. And I, I loved our, our chat. So where, where can people find you? Where can people find your stuff? Uh, great. So again, if you're interested in the, the brain shift journal, um, or the daily sh shift journal, uh, or any of those tools that we have, um, that will help. And we're always expanding it. You know, we, we build them and it just, it's a, a long process on some of those. So, uh, that can be found on Amazon, uh, just kind of, you know, search for brain shift journal, or we can, uh, you can go out to, um, brain shift.shop or behavior shift dot shop and those will lead you to actually even even more stuff on there i can be reached on linkedin um on uh twitter or x i guess x now right yeah. um, um all those social media linkedin is kurt w nelson so you can search for me there um and then my our website for the lantern group is lanterngroup.com so all cool. of those awesome i'm gonna check you out on on x so recently gotten on there so yeah motivation <laughs> cool. guru i think is uh, motivation my... guru yeah okay uh, so cool yeah. awesome sir well, i appreciate you and guys thanks for listening um but like i said you know on the elevate everyday podcast it's not just listening right you you want to put this stuff in action right away so so start changing your environment pay attention like kurt said to to the friction you know both between you and the good habits and you and the bad habits and the inverse so uh, put that stuff in action right away, guys, and I'll see y'all in the next video. But in the in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace, y'all. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.